Hi, I'm Charlotte, Evangelist Charlotte. Welcome to Shout It Out Ministries. I can't wait to get started today. I have so much to share. I look forward to you staying with me, enjoying this time together. The previous videos, I'm hoping that they are a blessing to you. My topic today, again, Freedom in Christ and the Kingdom of Heaven is the name of my series. Today we're going to be talking about answering that question, why believing is all you need. People are thinking about a lot of things today. They're believing this, that, and the other thing. But I'm going to talk about why believing in Jesus is all you need. God will take care of the rest. You just bring belief to the table and the Holy Spirit will do the rest for you. Okay, why don't we begin with prayer, inviting God to be with us and to give you a blessing. Why don't we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, bless my listeners. Meet every need, God. I pray that they hear this word, that they are strengthened, and that unbelievers will grab a hold of this word, God, and they will cling to Christ. In the name of Jesus, we praise you now and thank you, God, for every listener today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, I'm Evangelist Charlotte Lumpkins, and I can't wait to get started. For my new listeners, we'll briefly go through a couple of um, details of what we've talked about. But for my regulars, thank you for joining me. <clears throat> thank you for coming along and following. I'm going to read a couple of Bible verses. I have my Bible right here, and I have my notes. I always start with four, three questions, what it means to me, who needs to know this, how this is lived out, and who benefits. I hope I can get this all in today so that it'll be a blessing to you. Again, <clears throat> why believing is all you need. Believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. It says, believe in your heart, <clears throat> confess with your mouth, that Jesus Christ is Lord and you shall be saved. That is Romans 10, 9. I'm going to go slow for my new listeners. I'm going to take my time. We're not going to rush this topic because, you know, when we're young, we tend to see to believe a lot of things. You know, we have great imaginations. We have plans that we want to follow through with. We have thoughts that come to our mind, people telling us, well, you should try this. I believe that's a good thing for you. And then when you get to college, the professors are saying, try this. I think you're going to like this course. People have been pushing people to believe something for a mighty long time. In fact, since you were a child, you heard from school teachers what it is you're supposed to believe about this country, what it is you're supposed to believe about this nation and the world. Pastors tell you what they want you to believe in the Word of God. But guess what? You have to believe. You just can't hear it and let it go in one ear and out the other. That's not believing. <laughs> you have to apply it. So we're going to talk about why believing is all you need to receive Jesus Christ. There's a lot of pressures I was saying out there to pull people in different directions. <clears throat> I have the proof today. I have the proof from the Bible that substantiates Jesus' life that all you need to do is believe on him and you will have salvation. Okay, review. Remember, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was Jesus said, Acts 2.38. Again, rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for those who have believed. Now, my notes. What this means to me. The purpose of believing is for my faith to grow. We know that faith starts out like a mustard seed, very, very tiny seed. But as the seed grows, oh boy, it's the most biggest tree you ever want to see. Faith starts out small, but it grows and it grows with every opportunity you have to seek and talk to God. You have a prayer you begin with, Lord, help me. That's your quick prayer. That's it. You have to take a test. You have to go someplace. You might be lost. And you say, Lord, give me parking. I prayed that. Lord, give me parking. Any little incident for you to begin to apply your faith begins with believing in God, believing in Jesus. Faith, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Let's see what Hebrews 11.1 1 says. Number four. Hebrews 11.1, 1. it says, 
Faith is the confidence that we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. Though their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command and that what now we see did not come from anything that can be seen. That is faith. So when you say, Lord, uh, help me find a parking space, you're talking to somebody. <laughs> You're talking to God, and you're praying. That's a quick faith. And next thing you know, somebody's pulling out. You go like, yay, God, look at that. I thank you. Then you go around, wow, he actually heard me. <laughs> and then you have faith when somebody says to you, you know what? We're going to go have a good time tonight. You believe that person's going to show you a great time. You believe that you're going to have some friends. You're going to have a great dinner. Movie's going to be fine. You have faith in that person. That what they said, your companion, your partner, you know, an old schoolmate, you're going to have fun with that. That's called faith. So every day we put our faith in something or in someone. Our parents say, we're going to take you out for a, uh, a movie and a night and we're going to have ice cream. You didn't ask your mother to see the, the credit card before. You didn't ask your dad to see whether he got a license to drive. You just jumped in the car. You believed them, didn't you? You believed what your mom and dad said. You had faith in them. That's what God is saying. Scripture says he gave every person a portion of faith, and that is to believe in him. So you have faith. It's just what are you putting it in? God wants you to put it in his son, Jesus. And that's why believing is all you need to do. God has already planted the faith in you. I see you spread it everywhere around. I put my faith in a lot of things. I got disappointed. I got heartbroken. But it was faith. And God wants you to put it in his son, in the completed work of Jesus the Christ. So believe in your heart. You can do that. You already do that. Confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and you shall be saved. That's your part. Let's go on. I have more notes. God gave each of us a portion of faith. God gave each of us a portion of faith. Let me see. God gave each of us a portion of faith. It is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. See? It's impossible to please God without faith. Even though we have it, we put it everywhere else but in him. We're not pleasing God because we're not putting it in him or in his son. So we already have it. Say, can't say, Lord, I don't have no faith. What am he says, yes, you do. You just put it every place else but in him. He wants you to put it in his son, Jesus, for the salvation of your souls. Next, faith is what we use to apply the scriptures in our hearts. If God gives a promise in his word, we apply that faith. If the Bible says, Lord, Lord Jesus says, Lo, I'll be with you even unto the end of the world, that's faith. You're applying it to him. If the Bible says, Give us this day our daily bread, then you can pray that God will provide for you every single day. If the Bible says, Forgive us our sins, God forgave us our sins through Jesus Christ, death and resurrection. Put your faith in what Jesus has done. You might be weak in your faith, that's true, by having it everywhere else but him. But God is faithful. He will answer prayer. He will direct you. He will meet your need. Jesus will never forsake you. God will never turn you away. And you got to have faith in what Jesus has done. I know we mess up all the time. I know we make mistakes. But you got to have faith in Jesus that he's making intercession for you. He's praying to the Father for you that the next time they'll get it right. He's applying grace to you knowing that, yeah, Lord, they're going to mess up. But I'm praying for them that they will finally get the understanding that God wants them to have. Okay? So we have faith. Put it in Christ. He'll do the rest. He'll intercede for you to the Father. And you can have believing that your sins are forgiven. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all wrongdoing. That's the word promises of God. 
If the scripture says it, you can believe that God's going to deliver you. God's going to meet that need. And that's where you put your faith. You put your faith in Jesus the man. You put your faith in the word of God. And that helps you live this life as a believer, as a Christian. Faith in God points us to his existence and his authority. You can't possibly believe in somebody you don't see, taste, touch, or feel. That's what everybody says. I can't see God. I don't believe in God. I don't hear his voice. Where is he? Um, show me him and I'll have faith in him. That's what people say all the time. Show me him and I'll have faith in him. Show me where he exists and I'll follow him. Well, that is Jesus. Jesus left heaven, came down, and walked amongst us. He left heaven and he came with us. He died on that cross. That was God in Jesus. Scripture says God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. There's the proof you're asking for. Show us. Show us God. Jesus is God. In the carnate, in the flesh, he came down and he walked amongst us. So, having faith in God that you can't see, he said, the Lord says, I can fix that. I sent my son and he walked amongst us and they testified of him and the miracles that he did. All God wants you to do is believe in his son and his authority that he did. Okay, who needs to know this? You know a lot of people who are probably believing in a lot of things, right? They are. They got super powers in the movies. They got super powers when they read books. They got people doing magical stuff. People are believing everything. They got aliens coming one day. Some people believe that if they watch UFOs, they'll come back and take us away from here. Some people believe in the fountain of youth, that if they do certain formulas and carry themselves a certain way, if they can take certain portions and, and measure out certain pills, that that will prolong their life. People are looking. They're looking for eternal life. They don't want to die. They, they like it here, I guess. But guess what? They're putting their belief in something, but not in God. <laughs> if you want eternal life, if you want to live forever, you want the fountain of youth, come to Jesus and you'll never die. Amen. So who needs to hear this? Your friends, those who are searching, people who have questions, people who are in dire need of help, people who have feel like they've given up in life. People who just are going through a hard time. And this time in the year 2020, oh boy, we've been really, really struggling. People want answers. They want them from their government. They want answers from the medical system. They want answers from the federal government. People want answers. Guess what? They're men. They don't know. They're planning it as they go along. They're making up as they go along. But God, he has the answers from the foundation of the world, my son. Hear ye him, he said. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. You got questions about God? What's he doing? Take it to the son. You have things on your mind you can't figure out? Take it to Jesus because he has your life and the plan for that life in his hand. In fact, it says from the foundation of the world, God says your days are numbered. He knew you before you knew you. <laughs> Psalms 139. <clears throat> He knew you in your mother's womb. That's how thorough God is. So, who needs to know this? Everyone needs to know this. We have faith if we share this with others. It shows our faith is growing. If I believe it, then I'm going to tell my bestie, hey, I don't want you to miss out on this good news. Start sharing it with others. Who else needs to know? Everyone needs to look to God and put their faith in him. Not just a few. Not just a few people who feel privileged. Not just a few people who feel like, oh, I tried this, I tried that. I may as well try God. No. Everyone needs to hear that God loves them and that Jesus is the answer for the world today. Instead of man, you're waiting for the next man to step up on that podium. You're waiting for the next woman to step up on that podium. You're waiting for the next bill to pass. You're waiting for the next... How does it say? Congressional um, um, document to pass that will solve all our problems. If we can only get these people in line, then we know that we'll be fine. That's not true. 
I don't care what man you put on that podium. I don't care what woman you put on that podium or what congressional information they sign. Somebody's going to be disappointed. <laughs> Somebody's going to come away with a grudge. Somebody's going to come away sad. Things didn't work out for them. So they ain't going to cooperate. They're going to be like, I'm mad. It ain't going my way. So they resist. But guess what? Once Jesus is on tap, once Jesus steps into a situation, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. There's no uppityness. There's no preference in God. There's no, I got here in line first. Nope. God is levels the playing field. Jesus says there's no male, no female, no Jew, no Greek. We're all one in Christ. That's because Jesus levels the playing field because he's God. I love it. I love it. Everyone needs to turn from the world and turn to the Lord. That's God's goal. That's the goal of the Holy Spirit, to turn heart from the world that they seek, that they can fix and turn their mind to Jesus. Seek the Lord why he may be found. Amen. They want to see God. They need to put their faith in him. If you want to see God change your life, then you have to put your faith in him. If you want to see things change in your life, then you have to put your faith in God. You have to believe. Believing is the criteria that moves the hand of God. Believe on the Lord. Believe in him. That's the person you need to help you navigate this life. And God is available to everyone who comes to him. He will in no wise cast out. All right. Verse, um, Bible verse 7. Seek God. Matthew 6, number 7. Seek God. Here we go. Seek God. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. And live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. See? See that? Seek God. Seek him. Above all else, I mean your trials, your pressure, your stressing, the job, the family, seek the Lord. Seek God and his righteousness, and live in righteousness, and he will give you everything you need. Don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. That is the truth. I'm telling you. This, this, this study is going to help you move you forward. It's going to increase your faith. It's going to help you understand what God's will is to know the Son. It's going to help you put in perspective your thinking or your lack of thinking, your lack of answers. I'm hoping that this video will clear some things up in your mind. How this is lived out. <clears throat> It's very important for you to understand how this is lived out day by day. One, we tell others. It makes our faith grow. Praying to God, it makes our faith grow. Talking to God makes our faith grow. Asking God questions makes our faith grow. Ain't that something? Telling others the good news <coughs> helps our faith grow. Number nine. Telling others the good news. Here we go. Number nine. <clears throat> if the good news we preach is hidden <clears throat> behind a veil, it is hidden only from people who are perishing. Satan, who is the god of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. Oh. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ who is the exact likeness of God. Didn't I tell you that? <clears throat> that was Jesus. What <clears throat> God was in Jesus reconciling the world unto himself. That's just what we read. That's it right there. But Satan has blinded the minds of the people. He's offered them something. He's offered them another religion, not a relationship. He's offered them something in this world that they can strive for, get, but guess what? You can't take a dime with you. He's offered them something phony, something fake. You know that word. He's offered them something that appeases to their flesh. He's offered them something that sounds right, feels right, tastes right, looks right. 
but it's temporary. Guys, it's temporary. Everything that Jesus is offering you is forever, for lasting. It's not temporary. Satan can only give you a dose, a portion. And then that portion that he gives you is just a lie. It's a piece of a piece of a fake, partial truth. You know, a fake truth. A fake something that they'll believe in. This is what people say. Well, they can do it. Well, I heard that's what was all right. Well, thinking that this could be today's news, tomorrow it ain't the fad. Satan only set you up for a temporary high, a temporary kick, a temporary idea, because it's going to fade. It's going to pass. It's old news. Once it's not trending, that's how you can tell the enemy is just tagging you along. He's given you all of these distractions so you won't come to the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants you to put your belief in something other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And his job, Satan's job, is to distract you every time. Won't let you come to Bible studies? Nope. Won't let you think about the Lord? Nope. Won't let you think that God is real? Nope. He, people will believe in Martians coming back on spaceships. People will believe in the fountain of youth before they will accept that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, we're going to go on with some more. We have more and more to talk about. It takes faith to obey. I'm coming back with the next video. We're not through at all. We're going to finish with benefits, blessings, and promises. I don't want you to go away. This is Charlotte, Evangelist Charlotte. I'm hoping you're enjoying our shout out ministries. You heard it here. Come back. There's another video right after this. And we're going to talk about the faith in God, the promises of God, the joy of the Lord. Definitely, definitely you don't want to miss that. I love you. Take care. The next video is to follow. I look forward to having you join me again. Take care and we'll talk soon. Bye.